All right then, uh, good afternoon. This question we have agenda for today is, what is what do you enjoy about your as the CEO for Code for America? Uh, I enjoy waking up every single day trying to figure out how to make government see and serve all people and using technology as an enabler to be able to do that. What do you like to do when you're not working? Just hobbies. Ah, uh, play basketball. I uh, hang around with my kids. Um, sometimes race them and wrestle with them and dance. Um, yeah, and just in general, enjoy people in life and movement. Yeah, I did notice the basketball in the background. <laughs> 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 uh, why did you choose to attend Stanford University? Ah, interesting. Um, for me, it was a um, no no woman or Latina Hispanic had ever gone to Stanford from my high school, and um, I was surprised that I got in. And it was, um, and I wasn't sure I was gonna go to be honest. I, my family really wanted me to stay close. I had a local athletic scholarship at one of the local um, colleges, Christian college. And so when I got into Stanford, it sort of threw my whole world upside down. And I wasn't sure what I was gonna do because it would mean I would go four hours away, which was, uh, felt like a different island for, for my parents. <laughs> Um, and it was a teacher who pulled me aside and said, uh, this isn't about you. This is about um, someone like you can succeed at a place like that. And you've got to do this for your community. And so I went thinking, this is bigger than me. And I've got to, I've got to prove that we can do this at a place like Stanford. Um, and that's what really led me to go there. Um, little did I know it would open my eyes up to all kinds of opportunities that when you grow up in rural California, you don't see them quite so easily right in front of you. Um, but that's not why I said yes to Stanford. I said yes to Stanford because I knew I had a chance that others, other people like me never did. And when you get that door open, you got to walk through, even if you're scared and nervous. That's truly inspirational. And speaking of inspiration, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Wow, that was just real inspirational. <laughs> Who was one of your role models while you were in school? My role models while I was, what was that? At school? In high school, I'm sorry. In high school. High school. Gosh, high school. Yes. Um, my mom and dad, my grandma, you know, when I think about my grandmother coming to this country with all of her kids and figuring it out. Um, when I think about my dad, who still to this day hasn't read a book in English from cover to cover, um, but can figure out a way to have a small business and inspire three daughters to all get their master's degrees. Uh, my mom, who was a secretary at the schools, but probably the highest ranking Latina that I knew in my schools. Um, yeah, all of them and their inspiration, their hard work um, were what kept me getting good grades. And every single time, you know, those things would falter just a little bit. My dad would say, Mija, that's your job, right? Like we worked really hard for you to do this. Um, and so it's always made sure that I work hard because I, th I think in many ways, um, if only they had what they've given me, I have no idea what they could have done with their own careers and lives. Wow. Um, last question for me. Uh, what do you remember about Palo Alto and uh, what do you miss about it? What do I remember about Palo Alto and what do I miss about it? That is correct. You know, um, I think of Palo Alto very connected to Stanford um, because I remember coming there for the very first time. Right, and this was a kid from small town America, sort of looking around and going, wow, this is like the city. <laughs> and I know now it's not quite quote the city, but for a rural girl, girl from small town America, it was like the city and like thinking, I'm gonna get lost in this place. Um, and what I learned is how much of a gateway it is, was to innovative thinking, to new ways of doing things, to an energy that I've felt nowhere else, which is 
um, when you walk around the place, whether that's Stanford or its surrounding areas, people just believe you can do anything. Um, and living in a space where folks believe that is both exciting, um, it's a little scary, but I'll never forget it because I didn't know what I was missing about potential and opportunity until I really stepped foot in the Bay Area and really in Palo Alto and Stanford. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that runs up but part of the interview. I think now it is Mateo's turn, but thank you so much. Sure. Again. Thanks, Miguel. Yeah, take it away. No. What is your favorite Liga MX team or Mexican League soccer team? Well, I'm going to say the obvious, which is Chivas. Um, I mean, I got a chance with my family. We went to Mexico City. My sister was studying over there. And we actually watched one of the games back in like, I don't remember what year it was, but in the city streets. Um, so I like to follow. I mean, Chivas are Chivas, right? Yeah. Yeah, my family and I love uh, the Morelia Monarcas. Right on. Yeah. I'm glad to hear you actually, uh, you actually watch Liga MX. I do because my brother-in-law loves soccer and uh, he has roots in Jamaica. And so my family gets totally into it. Um, and we're a sports kind of family. Um, why did you quit Goldman Sachs and become a teacher? You know, it was interesting. I, I, was, I went back home. So I was working at Goldman. I went back home and my mom's in the, and I went to go to a basketball game in my high, old high school. And my mom's in the stands talking to one of her comadres. And, you know, I was kind of known in my little town because I was, I went to Stanford and I was pretty good in sports. And so people remembered that going to Stanford. I also played basketball and softball at Stanford. And so people had remembered that. And um, one of my mom's comadres kind of whispers over and says, what's your daughter doing now? Right. And my mom's like, well, she's working at a bank, kind of like a bank teller. And it wasn't exactly sort of how she described it, but it was a sense of disappointment isn't the right word, but it, it felt like I was supposed to be doing more. You didn't hear the like, my mija is, right? Um, and it really stuck with me on my drive back to LA that I was supposed to be doing something with this degree at Stanford. I was supposed to be making the world a little bit better. And it really um, put a spotlight on that. And so I uh, moved back home to teach and coach back in my hometown. But I have to say, that was the hardest career decision I've ever made, which is leaving your first job that you're pretty good at. Because <laughs> you're not sure, especially when you're a kid that comes from rural America in this small town who's never had jobs and put on a suit. You're, you, I didn't have parents who put on a suit every day. Um, I wondered whether I was going to be good at anything else. And so the biggest risk I feel like I ever took was leaving that first job. Yeah. What made you decide to run for governor in 2018? Yeah. So when you look around our world and where we are today, um, there's a couple of key voices missing. We don't have enough women um, at all levels of government. Uh, we're more than 50% of the population, but not at all represented as at 50% or more of um, political leadership. The Latino community um, is now the largest um, a minority ethnic electoral group in this country. And we didn't really have that voice, a younger generation. We didn't really have that voice on the platform. Um, but most importantly, I wanted people to see who grew up looking like me with the same kind of similar background to me that someday they can do it. And I think when you see it, you can be it. And it really mattered to me that there was a spotlight and a platform that I had at that moment to say, I want you to know you can do this. Um, I also think I could do a pretty good job at it. So um, that was a piece of it as well. Well said, well said. Do you have plans to run for office in 2022? <laughs> no, uh -uh. Um, I love what I'm doing. I think we need to make sure that government works for everyone. And I am fortunate and blessed to be at a place like Code for America that has spent a decade trying to make sure people have food stamps, trying to make sure people get their refund, trying to make sure we're clearing automatic record clearance so that if you have a record and you have served your sentence, you're not plagued by it the rest of your life. 
um, I think we've got to do the governing work that's necessary. So I might have not won that race to governor, but the work itself still really matters. And I'm absolutely committed to doing that. And when you're running, you don't really get a chance to do that. And I recognize how much I've missed um, being in it, doing the work and seeing the lives that you impact on a day to day basis. All right. Final question. What is your message to Mexican American and Latino students on pursuing their dreams? You know, um, I have a, I think it's somewhere back there. There's a, a frame, the gray frame. It's from my abuela and it says, mis sueños son, su, son tus sueños. My dreams are your dreams, your dreams are my dreams. And I think about that a lot, that whatever you're pursuing, it's not just your dreams, right? It's the dreams that many had before you to be where you are, but it's also the foundation of dreams you're laying for somebody else. So while that saying has meant a lot for me over time, whenever I'm doing something, I'm always remembering I'm taking my grandmother and taking all those folks before me with me on this journey of living this dream. And now that I have kids, I think often I'm just building the base and foundation for their dreams because I'm going to leave them with the same message. And so um, particularly for the Mexican American community, as we are growing in numbers and in leadership power and really an in influence. Um, it's important to remember where we came from, but also what we're leaving behind for others to pursue. Ms. Renteria, on behalf of MAS, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your leadership and inspiration. We wish you success in your future endeavors. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being with you all. Pleasure having you.